Early on in my life, I knew I wanted to be a pilot. I spent just about 10 years in the Navy. And I flew F-14s and then targeted Southwest Airlines. And I've been here for 25 years now. I started the chief pilot job about four and a half years ago. Welcome to the NOC Ops Brief. It's the 16th of August. I'd like to take just a moment to talk about uh, some of the results uh, in comparison to our uh, competition from yesterday. The NOC operates 24 hours, seven days a week. Every department that is involved in the operation of a flight is all in the room. And we have 4,000 flights approximately every day. So it's a pretty big room. We have been in the pilot seat, out on the line. We have a vast experience and knowledge as to the issues that a pilot can face during their operation. All the other departments have uh, come to rely on our expertise as we rely on their expertise as well. Tonight we could see a line of some uh, scattered showers and some thunderstorms develop off to their west and push east. Every day, twice a day, there is a system-wide brief. Everyone in the brief has an integral part in the operation. That's to discuss uh, any issues that the stations may have, uh, and also uh, weather that may be yeah. impacting the operation. Uh, it is going to be a challenging day. Everyone and, uh, uh, chimes ahead. in on their issues yeah. that they may have, and it really helps the network and the sides make the decisions on the daily operations. The NOC was purpose-built with advanced technology and officially opened for service in 2014. Employees from multiple departments and teams within those departments work closely together to coordinate every moment's demands. Each person working in the NOC has a critical role in keeping our network moving. On the NOC floor, department representatives collaborate in real time to provide a comprehensive view of all aspects of the network. They also discuss current issues and how they will affect departures for the remainder of the day. Together, the department representatives and their leaders make decisions as to how to react to the issues at hand. Flight Dispatch is responsible for the safe planning, dispatching, flight following, and support of our aircraft. Dispatchers are FAA licensed and share joint responsibility with the captain for the planning and safe conduct of flights. They advise and respond to in route changes and irregularities, as well as provide the captain with real time information to help them make better decisions aboard their aircraft. Dispatch ATC works with air traffic control on our behalf here at Southwest Airlines. They monitor traffic flow in the national airspace system. And when the system becomes bogged down and puts our flights at risk for significant delays, they find solutions with their ATC counterparts. The dispatch superintendent collaborates with other departments to coordinate and execute the published flight schedule. Our meteorologists analyze current weather and forecast its impact on our business. They prepare forecasts and keep everyone in the NOC informed of potential weather impacts for the day of ops, as well as an outlook for the rest of the week. Flight ops crew scheduling put pilots on every flight. When there are irregular operations or someone is sick and cannot fly, our schedulers keep us going by placing pilots in the right place at the right time. They also make sure they are legal to fly, have the required rest, and comply with our labor agreement. Working alongside flight ops crew scheduling, in-flight crew scheduling provides the same support for Southwest flight attendants. These two teams work together every day to ensure each flight is crewed. The Technology Operations Center monitors the health of our many systems and technology, Server reliability, software, and the like are managed by this team. They monitor these mission-critical systems so they stay operational and support our network. As their title says, our customer service coordinators help coordinate customer efforts between dispatch superintendents and station employees during irregular operations. They also reaccommodate customers when required. Maintenance control keeps our aircraft flying with unplanned equipment issues as well as routine and scheduled maintenance. This requires a difficult balance and little time to do it. Each one of these teams has representation on what is called the bridge. Here, leaders huddle each morning to assess the day ahead and continue discussions throughout the day with their teams as to the action with regard to any number of network issues. Additional roles offering support on the bridge are the Chief Pilot NOC, In-Flight Base Manager NOC, Manager Command Center NOC, Proactive Customer Service, 
social care, safety and security business partners, and network director. Together, this group of operational professionals protects our network. Their collaboration and expertise provide outstanding internal and external customer service, all for the goal of keeping our customers safe and on time. As the briefing ends, the first shift of the day begins in the NOC. The NOC team is now ready to deal with whatever challenges the day ahead presents. In a big event uh, where in one day, unplanned, uh, 20 plus aircraft get taken out of service. What's like the first thing uh, the SODs do in a situation like that? Well, the uh, first thing is, again, we look at the schedule. We find out where we have gaps. We find out where we have time where aircraft would have normally been sitting on the ground idle. We take that ground time and use that to rebuild the schedule with, uh, you know, with excess aircraft that we may have that would have normally been sitting. We so, do what we yeah. can to put everything back together to try to keep a full schedule going. Let's say they just cancel the block of flights and the sods all put them together mm -hmm. and they say crew this now mm -hmm. and you've had to reroute a bunch of pilots. What, what does that look like? What do, you, what do you do and what tools do you use? It'll come through in our system once it's up that all these flights have been canceled and we will just run a solution. Um, we can run them all together at the same time if they do a block of cancellations and it will um, just look at every pilot's board and see how they can piece it together to, to cover all the uncovered flying that's out there from the cancellations now. Still even then, they can call here and, and, and then talk through something. Right, of course, and yeah, pilots are always welcome to call anytime. We're always here to answer any of the questions. I'm pretty much a uh, liaison between Southwest Airlines and the uh, air traffic control. We monitor the traffic flow in the national airspace system and we try to somewhat predict or anticipate delays later and advise the side. What aspect of your job do you think is the most important? I mean, what, how do you influence the operation? Uh, let's say, for example, like uh, tomorrow, we're going to have thunderstorms in the Northeast. Uh, so these guys will look to me and say, hey, Leslie, how bad do you think it's going to be? That's when I could come up with rates. I could model the potential delays. And sometimes we will proactively cancel flights just to uh, be able to reduce or impact on the system at Southwest and reduce our delays. Let's take a closer look at three examples that impacted the network and how the NOC coordinated to deal with them. In the first scenario, a customer on board had a medical issue and shows how the teams in the NOC worked together to counteract its effects. Flight 4298 was dealing with an unsettled customer with a medical issue. The captain of Flight 4298 contacted their dispatcher in the NOC to alert them of a potential diversion and discuss a plan of action. Hey, dispatch, it's 4298. We have a medical situation. Need to contact StatMD to evaluate a passenger and start looking at possible divert airports. To provide the best options for the captain and crew, the dispatcher kicked off the collaboration between all relevant parties at the NOC. The decision-making process began in real time. The dispatcher notified the SOD and they came up on frequency and monitored StatMD with the pilot. The SOD then coordinated with the diversion station, which in this case was Denver. The SOD worked with CSC and crew scheduling. The SOD also notified the comm SOD, who notified bridge leadership, including the chief of dispatch, chief of network, chief pilot, in-flight base manager, safety and security, and network director. Denver sounds like a good plan with good weather. Okay, let's go to Denver. The dispatcher provided the captain with diversion airport weather, their fuel burn, and other regulatory requirements. The crew notified air traffic control of their intention to divert to Denver. The dispatcher confirmed with Denver Station that Flight 4298 was diverting to them and needed EMS to meet the flight at the gate. The dispatcher confirmed with crew that the station was aware of the diversion and that EMS would meet them at the gate. In Scenario 2, Flight 1772 contacted the dispatcher to discuss an unreliable and intermittent weather radar. Do you have a frequency so we can chat? Come up on Omaha Ops Frequency 130125. Looks like the radar is showing the weather and the interference. We're painting the weather north of Eau Claire. After notifying the SOD of the radar issue, the dispatcher called the captain and maintenance control to discuss the best diversion station for weather and maintenance. The SOD contacted crew scheduling to discuss crew availability if needed. The SOD then notified the COM SOD, who notified bridge leadership. 
Next, the SOD contacted the dispatcher, recommending Midway as the best option for diversion. Looks like we're too heavy for Midway based on fuel. Yep, I was just looking at that and running into the same issue. Baltimore isn't the best option due to weather looking at Pittsburgh. Looks like Pitt's the winner, stand by for numbers. And these are just some of the many situations developing at any given time. The dispatcher often has a luxury of knowing ahead of time that something could be disruptive and helps their crews plan accordingly. In scenario three, our LAX station experienced a power outage due to a construction incident. The LAX station notified the comm side of the power outage. The comm side communicated with all LAX dispatchers that were working LAX flights, notifying them of the outage. The dispatchers then contacted pilots of flights heading to LAX of the outage and came up with a diversion plan for each. The pilot of Flight 1714 called the dispatcher to notify of an early arrival into LAX. Looks like we're going to be 25 early. How's the gate situation look? It doesn't look good. Slow down if possible. Long range crews would be ideal. Los Angeles lost power and we can't push any airplanes. The construction crew cut the main power line into our terminal. It's not going to be resolved anytime soon. We'll most likely be looking at tarmac issues because we can't deplane. I say we stop in Las Vegas if agreeable. Let's go to Vegas. Flight 1714 was diverted to Las Vegas. Each of these examples highlights the communication and collaboration that goes on in the NOC every day. And these situations don't happen in isolation. Dispatchers frequently have to manage and prioritize up to 20 aircraft issues simultaneously. I would tell my fellow pilots that the NOC is obviously a great resource. I was going from uh, Midway to Cancun, it was a turn that day, and we got about 100 miles north of New Orleans and we got the uh, takeoff config warning horn. Working with dispatch on weather, fuel, where we could go, talking with maintenance of where the best place they would like the airplane to be, uh, we all decided on Houston. Uh, by the time we got to Houston, we already uh, had an aircraft waiting for the, our passengers at gate two. Scheduling already had a message on uh, the first officers and myself's phone because we were now no longer going to be legal to continue, so they already, knew, already had a reroute for us, and uh, they already had a new crew for our passengers, our customers, so they could get to where they needed to get. So there was a delay incurred, but the coordination of the knock to get all that done as quickly as possible was about 45 minutes, so uh, it was a great, uh, great help to, uh, to, uh, to us and our customers. So don't feel like contacting the knock is taking anything away from your decision making or anything away from your power. It actually really helps you make a better decision. No matter how impressive our on-time departure record, issues come up. And when issues happen, so do delays. Some are avoidable, some are not. When you're out on the line, uh, you're really hyper-focused on your singular operation. It's just about you, your crew, and your passengers. And it can be very frustrating if you don't understand how the decisions are being made. But if you have a big picture and you understand that everyone in the NOC is doing their due diligence for the greater good of the operation, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. And so when it comes down to a hard decision that needs to be made, a tough decision, it is really laid on the captain's shoulders. He has us as a consultant, as a resource to help him make that decision. Our network is incredibly dynamic, obviously, with 4,000 flights a day, uh, 500,000 people moving. So I think one flight can impact over 40 flights of connecting passengers. And you extrapolate that out over to the entire system. You can see how things can get out of hand rather quickly. But that's why the knock stays on top of, of all, the, all these issues and does a really good job of maintaining an on-time performance throughout the system. And it's pretty phenomenal. There's no single person or department at the NOC that makes it the asset it is to the operation. It's the sum of its parts. Our team of experts and their skills at using the tools available to them to make critical, real-time recommendations for pilots and the network. Together, they protect our network. I help set up the airline for the day, for all the launches, and I communicate with the NOC to make that happen every day. Within 15 minutes, between 6 and 6.15, we launch 18 airplanes. And if you don't have that communication, you can't set up a good lineup and make sure all the passengers get out on time. Collaboration with the NOC, uh, we wouldn't be the airline that we are today if it wasn't for the great job that they do over there. One phone call can take you to any resource you need in the company, and every one of those people in the NOC is focused 
on the particular phone call or the situation at hand. Los Angeles has some of the shortest turn times, so we really depend on the resources and the knock to help us out here in the station. If we didn't have the NOC, I guarantee you, our turn times wouldn't be as good as they are and our on-time performance wouldn't be as good as it is in Los Angeles. I know in the station, sometimes it's hard to understand what they're doing and why they're doing it, but I have that trust that they're doing everything for our best interest and they're really there to support us. Obviously, sometimes it doesn't work out for everybody uh, when we make a decision, but I think that the group that's in there um, is well aware of what the, the ultimate goal uh, for the airline is and to try to do what's best for everybody. If we operated today without the, with the NOC, it would be total chaos. The communication factor would be very slow and moving from department, and it would just slow everything way down. Trust is... Uh, yeah. Besides communication, it's at the top of the list. The NOC has to trust that I'm doing what's best for the company, for the customer, and for my station, and I have to trust that they're doing what's in the best interest of all that also. So without the trust, there's gonna be a lot of tension, a lot of pushback, but if you build that relationship with communication and trust, then your plans are gonna be much more effective. You have to rely on their decisions and trust that they're putting you in a situation that you can succeed. So if I'm making a decision, if our team's doing something, if we're not getting connecting customers, it's not because we don't love our customers anymore. It's because there might be more customers down line that we need to share that love to. Still the love airline, that hasn't changed. We're gonna go out of our way for our customers. We've proved that over the years. Uh, I, think, I think the pilots, the more trust they have in us, the more trust um, we have in them, and the more they know about what we're doing and the NOC is doing, I think would benefit them as well. When you walk in uh, to the NOC, you see a group of experts from all disciplines solving dynamic issues in real time. It makes you realize what a high quality uh, work environment we have. You can see that our on-time performance year after year is really good. Our customer service ratings are fantastic. And who drives all that? It's our employees. That is a, a big reason why this company and this airline is so successful. When I'm out on the line flying, I, I realize that I'm not just flying for, for my 143 passengers on that particular flight. I, I feel like I am out there pushing an operation that's flying all 500,000 uh, passengers across the entire system.